Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to day three of Planet IMEX, the October edition. My name is Richard Orchild. I am the Senior Sales Manager at IMEX and I will be your moderator for today's session. Unfortunately, today our industry is being hit hard and many of our friends and colleagues find themselves out of work. We learned yesterday from Robert on how to be positive and how to start moving forward. Now that session is on demand, so if you missed it, it was a wonderful session, so do make sure that you catch up on, on that on Planet IMEX um, over the next few days. But in today's session, Robert will give you all of the tips of the trade and how to make you stand out of the crowd when looking for work, from your LinkedIn to your CV and how to interview in this new face-to-face -face virtual world. Just some housekeeping for you um, for the session. I encourage you to use the chat as much as you'd like, but for any questions, please use Slido. Um, and then you'll see that it's a little blue bar. So anything um, you need me to see when we ask you for any questions, please paste it into the Slido. But for now, I'd like to introduce you to our great speaker today, Robert Kenwood. For those of you who don't know Robert, Robert is the Chief Talent Officer for You Search and Select, the event and experiential recruitment specialist. But Robert is not just a recruiter and he's fully emerged within the meetings and events industry. So Robert currently serves as a judge for the MIA, He's on the board of Valia, and he also helps out with the education for the Fast Forward 15 mentor program. So if those who don't know Robert, he's doing so much for the industry um, at the moment, offering one-to-ones um, on his website. Um, so we'll give you some more details on that uh, throughout the session. But for now, I'd like to pass it over to Robert. Hey, hey, Richard, how are you, sir? Yeah, well, very good, thanks. Yeah, looking forward to, to day three of Planet IMEX. Yeah. How are you? I see, it feels like only yesterday we last spoke. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> There's my corny gag. Well, thank you again for, for inviting me on. Exactly as Richard said, yesterday's session was very much on the sort of personal, the emotive side of things and really linking into the whole premise of what can you do rather than can't you do is what we're going to talk about today. So as Richard said, you know, unfortunately, there's, you know, there's more people than ever applying for the roles. Um, you do need to make yourself stand out to recruiters and hiring teams. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, using a different font or different paper. That's about that sort of first impression and understanding that you actually do only get one chance to make that impression. So what we'll do is we'll kick straight off into just explaining what we're going to do overview. So we'll be supercharging your LinkedIn profile. We'll be helping you create a standout CV. Um, and really that CV needs to focus on what you, how you can add value rather than what you've done. And also the only time I'll ever say we're in the new normal, because remember, we're not in the new normal. This is still crisis management at the moment. But the only time I'll say we're ever in the new normal is video interviewing, which will be for the foreseeable until we can get back into offices. So the whole point about the session today is helping you move from what I call passive to active. So marketing yourself rather than your history and really putting all that together that will make you not just more appealing and, um, to potential employers, but actually you'll find it very positive to do for yourself. So this is all around getting you that all important interview, which then leads to the job. So point number one, LinkedIn. And the reason I put a seagull there is there's an awful lot of noise on li uh, LinkedIn, not just because I'm based in Brighton. Um, and I think the thing with LinkedIn is it's seen very much as a, a recruiter's playground, Lots of uh, funny stories um, look go from LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is probably one of the most underused platform in the social media um, arsenal, really, whether from myself as social recruiting or for brands or for yourself and your own personal brand or putting yourself out into that shop window. I think one of the key things with LinkedIn is to understand everybody is scared or nervous to try it. LinkedIn is not an immediate result platform. You have to put the time in, you have to be consistent, you have to show up. It's one of those where you can truly be yourself in a professional environment, but you have to engage and network and be part of the platform rather than just expect anything to come to you. Now on that, what I would say, you must remember content is king or queen or whatever, whatever we want to say. It is always about what you're putting out there because trust me, remember, people are always, always seeing your content on that platform. I've had many clients and new clients and potential clients during conversations mention to me, I've seen what you put out on LinkedIn and they've never engaged, never liked, never commented, but people are seeing what you're putting out there. So that's not to put you off. That's just to remember that what you're putting out there is what you're happy to have out there. And look, just like life, um, not everybody on there you're going to agree with. My biggest thing from there is I got it from my mentor, Martin Ellis. Don't let other people's monkeys get on your back. What I mean by that is you will not change someone's mind on LinkedIn. So just let it go. <laughs> 
So I'm always asked for things like on LinkedIn and, and you know, when people are looking at jobs, what are recruiters or hiring teams looking for? People seem to think there is this sort of um, magic silver bullet that, that recruiters and teams have. And the bottom line is, and the positive answer is, they're actually looking for you. Um, nobody puts an advert out there hoping that no one applies. Nobody puts an advert out there hoping that they don't find people. They want to find you. And that's the key thing to remember with hiring teams and recruiters. They are paid or they are employed to find you and put you onto a shortlist to be interviewed. That is their role. So they're looking for you. So they're looking for keywords. They're looking for examples of how that links into what they are looking for. And the key thing about that is about you being concise and clear and succinct on everything you do that is going to be used as a selection tool. So if you're thinking about the CV and LinkedIn, for example, that is not going to get you the job. Try to stop thinking about that getting you the job because that is your end result. What you're actually looking for is to get an interview with the people that are going to get you the job. And nine times out of 10, that hiring team and 10 times out of 10, that recruiter is not the person that's going to get you the job. So if you're applying or looking at your profile and you think you can do the job, but your profile or CV doesn't say that, you won't get a chance to interview. You've got to get it up front because that's what they're looking for. And more people than ever now are online than they were before. Whereas before CVs could have got printed or CVs passed over, not a lot of people have printers at home. So people are looking at LinkedIn more than ever as a pre-selection method to put you forward for interview. So it's very important that you understand that. So the whole thing about LinkedIn is taking it from good to great. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is on my website, and I know you'll mention this later, Richard, but there's, there's a lot of stuff to go through today. I have done a LinkedIn webinar, I have done a CV webinar with a template, and I have done a video interviewing webinar too. So there is more content. This is basically three hours of content tried to be condensed into 40 minutes. So just bear with me when I'm going through this. So I mentioned before, that good to great is you get one chance to make that good impression. It's about being passive before your profile could have been where someone would find you or where someone would come to do a bit of research. Now it's you putting yourself in front of other people. So you've got to think about not just the reader, the key thing, and we, we touched on this yesterday, but the key thing to remember is what do you want them to say about you? Because the person reading your CV or LinkedIn at the beginning, as I say, is not possibly going to be the person that gives you their job. They don't want to look silly in front of the person they've got to shortlist. They need to tell a story about why they've put you there. So you've got to give them that story. So the other thing about a LinkedIn profile, it's about self-promotion not self-congratulating, look what I've done. It's about self-promotion. Here's what I can do for you. Your potential employer is thinking about what you're going to do for them. And remember that. That's, they're the people that are going to give you the job. Um, bullet points always, trust me. Bullet points to your friend. And if at all time, if you see yourself writing the words passionate or committed or experienced, give yourself a metaphorical slap around the face and read it again. And if you ever come down to anything and you get really, really stuck, think of the old adage kiss, which is keep it simple, stupid. Obviously, Robert, just qu quickly on that, obviously with your CV, when you send that off, you would change it for every job. You could tweak it. But with LinkedIn, it's hard to do that. So do you need to just keep your LinkedIn quite general so that you're sort of appealing to a large audience? Yeah, 100 um, percent. I would disagree to change your CV for every application. I would look at your personal profile is the bit that I would change for most applications. But you could probably sectorize your CV because no one wants to read your CV you know, 20 times. LinkedIn, the key thing I would say about LinkedIn is tell people what you're a specialist at. Um, you'd be surprised how much traction people get, Richard, by saying they're great at two, three, four things rather than saying, hey, I might be able to do everything. So your LinkedIn, yes, is more generic, but it doesn't mean it has to be less punchy or powerful. Okay. Now, in, in the chat, and obviously, look, I'm, I'm showing off a bit, but also you'd expect my profile to be to be pretty good. In the chat, I think in Slido, oh no, sorry, in the comments, there'll be a link to my um, to my profile. So you can have a look at how you can turn your page into a more of an active paid page. Does that come up now, Richard, or should I just move on? Uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll put that. You won't see that, Robert, but um, oh, okay. yeah, we'll we'll put that into the chat so that everyone will be able to see um, the link to your your LinkedIn. I felt like Chris Witter. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other, these are my top five smash and grab. If you don't think of anything, remember this. So when you're looking at that LinkedIn profile, or the others, I'll give you examples of. You have three core areas, which is the area that LinkedIn tries to get your eyes to. 
The top bit is called your banner, which is the, the sort of most people have a blue uh, background. The round photo of you is called your profile and the bit under there is called your headline. So think of your banner as your advert to the world. That is the thumbnail that will be scrolled. That is the billboard on the side of the road. That is you shouting to people in amongst that noise. This is why I want you to stop and look at me. So once you've got them to stop and look at you with your banner and you can look at, you know, tools like Canva, C-A-N-V-A. You can create your own banner in PDF, JPEG, uh, sorry, PNG or JPEG. Very simple to do with words. You get the retention. Your headline is your retention grammar. That is the bit that's going to really make them double check you. So the headline is where you tell them, this is how I add value. This is what I'm great at. The about part in LinkedIn is your pitch. Think of what you would say to them if you were in front of them. Your key highlights, brands you've worked with, projects you've worked on, um, why you, uh, sorry, things like um, what you're most proud of. All the sort of things that maybe you would think about talking in an interview, think that you won't get an interview. So you've got to get it out there. The job history is important, but that can be a bit more about key attributes and responsibilities because that's more their research. And the other thing I would say about LinkedIn all the time is post and engage with others. You've got to be involved. You've got to show up. Now, if you want a real quick trick that I do, the weekend is the best time to post on LinkedIn. Um, there's much less noise on the, on the weekend. Um, you'll be heard amongst that. And if your content's good, as always, the weekend I find actually I get some of my best traction on a Saturday. That was LinkedIn as fast as I've ever done it in my life. Um, proof is in the pudding. There, there'll be three links and I've, I've had permission from these three people um, to share their profiles. These three people, um, I, as you know, I've been doing some one to ones. and We've done nearly, I think, 250 now. And these three have had a profile that was good. And I look at them and I use them in all my one to ones now to say, look at these people's profiles. And with less than an hour or two hours work, you can make your profile as good as this. So please take the time to, to have a look at these people. Robert, we have a question uh, then curious why you don't have your picture on, on your profile. Is that because they're not linked with you yet? Or uh, I do. It's me going like this. Okay. <laughs> it must be maybe that may, maybe it hasn't loaded for, loaded for them. Yeah, I thought that just came through on the slide. I would say, and do you know what? This is embarrassing. It took me a while to realize this you've got your settings not done right, whoever that is. When you go into settings on profiles and it says, do you want to see pictures of people? You have to actually put yes. Okay, perfect. Because I think even if you're second or third stage, they should still see me. That could have been embarrassing, couldn't it? If I didn't Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you're, the main picture on my banner is my puppet, Matt, and he's far more attractive and gets more traction than I do, so I'm pleased with that. So that was LinkedIn. Whew, right, moving on. So... We're talking about CVs. Now, CVs are an absolute polarizing opinion. <laughs> Everybody has their own views. I would One thing I would say about CVs, and I've, I've been looking at CVs and hiring and recruiting people in events and recruitment for, for 20 years, but I would still say to you, don't listen to just what I'm saying and do it verbatim. Trust your gut and do what you think is right. Take the advice I'm giving you, but do what you think is right because it's your CV. So this is just me giving you, an, some, you know, some pointers. Now, the first thing to do before you think about even starting your CV is actually realign what your CV is for. What's the point of your CD, CV? And again, mentioned it earlier, Richard, lots of people think that the CV is going to get you the job. It's not. The first thing that CV does is getting you on the table with the hiring manager. That's stage one. And I, actually, I'll mention this later. But the second bit is it gets you in front of the interview. That's when your CV then you know, has all the notes put on. So your CV is actually your marketing document. It's to add credibility to your application when you're not in the room being able to talk them through bits and pieces. Um, and every time you write something on your CV, think to yourself, so what? And I know that sounds really harsh, but if you're asking yourself the question, so what, you will understand. Are you just putting that down because you want people to hear it or are you putting it down because it adds credibility? Because if it doesn't add credibility, don't put it on there. It's a waste of um, that person's time where you want them reading the content that's actually going to get you that interview. So we'll come back to in a minute. You know, I've got a really couple of slides that just go through it. But the one thing I would also advise you about CVs um, is Everybody asks their family and friends or, or husband, and I never understand why, because unless they're, I mean, I've been with my wife a long time now, and she would tell me it was shit, and I don't mind saying that word, I'm afraid. Um, but realistically, 
uh, your friends and family's opinion. It doesn't matter what your friends and families think. It's about the person you're applying for. So ask your friends and family to read your CV, but ask them, what are you thinking about right now? What are the three things you're thinking about? And that will make you understand, are you getting across content that is getting in someone's head and staying there? Or are they just reading it, looking at it from a, well, I just know that you're an event and you've got to take on board that advice. So talking about polarizing opinion, um, I've got some myth busters for you. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, Richard. Um, yeah. And what I'll do is I think you mentioned um, if people want to just put a yes, you know, a Y or an N in Slido just to sort of get a, a straw poll of what we're doing. Is that right? Yeah, if you can just use Slido because that's what I have access to. So um, I know it's not a question, but you can just put a yes or a no in into Slido for, for these questions. So what I'm going to do is there's three myth busters and they're always the ones that are asked about. Um, and then I'll just give you some real, you know, bullet points and we'll go through. So the first one I'll ask you, Richard, what do you think about people putting pictures? Should you put a picture on your CV? Yes or no? For people in Slido. That wasn't just saying to you, give me a yes. Yeah, I'll put it, we'll give it a sec for, for Slido to, to come through. Um, but I'll give you my answer while that's, while that's coming. I would say no. And that's only just because I think in this world, a lot of interviews are, uh, I guess, are blind that I guess, they don't, can't necessarily see who you are or um or be led in, in a certain way so i would say f for your photo it would be a no i agree now i know that sounds a bit weird because on linkedin you have a photo but that's secondary what i would say about photos on cvs is two things yes it is a diversity and inclusion unfortunately you know people make that decision um my personal thing on photos it's like dating sites when you look at a photo and we all do it whenever there's a new person in our company Everyone goes straight to LinkedIn to have a look at what he or she looks like. You start making opinion in your head and that hiring team will. I wonder what they like to work with. Are they nice? Are they going to be good to go out for a drink with? Do they look a bit moody? Do they look happy? They will start to form an opinion and it's called unconscious bias. And that could affect your application. The other one, Mythbusters. Um, how many just, pages? On that, just on that sorry with, with the poll it's actually quite mixed um slightly oh, yeah. in the in the no but some said yes i just is it different different cultures would you say obviously we have people from around the world or i guess in general I, I just yeah i mean the whole thing is obviously you know look dni as we talked about i know that um there was a, a great session on dni but this is not for me dni I'm, I'm looking at it from an unconscious bias point of view people will start making decisions on what they think you're like and you don't want that because yeah. you're not there to talk to them and tell them that they're wrong. <laughs> so for the sake of it, let me put it another way. A picture is not going to get you an interview and not having a yeah. picture, uh, but, but sorry, a picture could stop you getting an interview. Not having a picture is not going to stop you getting an interview. So just yeah. perfect. Uh, covering letters, uh, sorry, pages. Um, do you think it, uh, uh, sorry, I, I can't think of a yes or no for this. Do you think it should be two pages or more than two pages? Yes for two pages, no for more. So I would say, um, yeah, I, I mean, they always say, I mean, again, it's a myth, bu myth buster, don't go over two pages. I remember I think when I first started, it was keep it to one page and it was like trying to sque squeeze it all in. Um, but I guess if it's relevant, the length shouldn't really matter as long as everything in there is relevant, but you probably should be able to keep it to two pages, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, I'm a great fan of content, as you can tell. Um, for me, your your application CV should be, if you can't get across in 800 to 1,200 words what you need, that's the situation you need to apply for. Now, the reason I, I'm a big fan of 800 to 1,200 is remembering that sort of timeline. There is nothing wrong if you've got a four-page CV because of all the information and, and stuff you think could get you the job. There's nothing wrong at interview stage sending that CV saying, Here's some more information for you for when we meet. You've got to think about the stages. If they've got 100 applications coming through and you're, you've got a four page CV that waffles on about how experienced you are and how passionate you are, that is going to go against you. So I, I always look at it. People speed read your CV within six seconds. I'll just pause for dramatic effect. They scan your CV for six seconds before deciding whether to read it properly. That that is, you know, like it or not, that is, you know, what's that? Generally, then it's about a 30 second read before you go in that metaphorical yes, no, maybe part. So think about the reader. It's not what you're trying to say. What do you want them to say about you? And the last quick one before I whittle through some, and this will polarize opinion, covering letters. Are we yes for covering letters or no for covering letters? So just just quickly, um, 
everyone in the chat pretty much it was 90 percent was a, a yes to stick to two pages on on the last one um so for this one with the covering letters i would say yes um because it's a chance to sort of get your personality across um just because but maybe after what you've just said that you've got six seconds at the start that's probably not maybe that's like for stage two so maybe you've changed my mind halfway halfway through <laughs> i think for me and remember this is my advice you take for me unless specifically asked for a covering letter or, or you're going for a job as a copywriter or something like that a covering letter is a waste of your time okay think about what you want to say in that covering letter and that to me would go in your personal profile if it's going to help you get an interview if your covering letter is telling the company why you think you should get an interview, I would put that in the body of your email. If I was sending you my CV, Richard, in the body of the email, I would say, here's the reasons, Richard, why I think you should choose me. Now, what happens with covering letters is, again, people go into detail about covering letters to try to get the job. That's what you, But that's, remember we talked about, that's the end goal. You're trying to get yeah. an interview. The other thing on a more practical level is when your CV is sent to the decision-making team, Nine times out of 10, they won't send your covering letter. Your CV gets sent over. So all that beautifully crafted content on your covering letter is just going to sit in somebody else's email and not the actual person that's going to give you the job. That's just my opinion. So unless asked, you're, you, you would say stick to just the CV. Uh, yeah, and your personal profile, you know the bit at the top of the CV? That yeah. is the mini covering letter. That, that part there is a mini covering letter. Or the blow, let's be honest, a covering letter is your chance to blow smoke up the arse of the people you're applying for to say, please give me an interview because I really liked this and I think you're a great company. Just stick that in the body of an email. There's no yeah. need for that. Okay. What, out of curiosity, what was the sort of split? <laughs> uh, it's 50 50, actually. There's quite yeah. a few in there, but yeah, it's generally 50 50. Um, and interestingly, we did have one comment that um, in some countries it is actually required to send a photo um, with, with your, really? your photo. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I've learned something there. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm just going to whittle through some now. So there's some other things. So where you live. My advice, don't put where you live on a CV. I don't mean not your address. I mean, don't even put the location. The reason why, and this is pre-COVID, not just because of remote, but for example, if you're applying for a job in central London and you live in Milton Keynes and you put Milton Keynes, that hiring manager might be sat there thinking, well, that's not London. And they won't know that you can get into London quicker from Milton Keynes than you can from when I used to go from Richmond to Camden. So these are all things about and, and I call this about, you know, making that process as streamlined as possible. Take out any barriers, take out anything that could. I'm not saying it will, but take out anything that could and give yourself more of a chance. Mobile phones, I uh, mobile numbers. I can't understand why people don't put their mobile on a CV. Put your mobile on a CV, please. That should be a given. Um, another thing, another a tip. If you're applying for a role with a CV, don't put your CV as CV RK 14th of October 2020. That means something to you. That hiring team who have got another 100 to read through will not know what that CV is. Put down my advice is put your name and put the job that you're going for. Robert Kenwood, Chief Talent Officer. Save your CV as your name and the role you're going for. Because trust me, on the other side, people will thank you for that. And it also goes into their CRM a lot easier. Um, emails. If you're still using uh, sexybabe at gmail.com or something like that, let's be honest, it's time to change that. Um, hobbies and interests. Will hobbies and interests get you the job? They might do, but at interview stage, if you've got, if you want to try and keep your CV more succinct and content driven, I'd drop the hobbies and interests. Caveat, if you're going for a team role and they keep talking about team teams and you happen to manage a local rugby team and everything you do is team, of course, use your common sense. But really, nobody ever got a job because they, they enjoy squash and long walks in the country. It just <laughs> doesn't happen. Um, references available on request. We know that. We, we understand that. It doesn't matter if you put it in or not. It's not needed. If you want to put it, great. But it's just quite obvious. Now, an interesting one in our, our industry is infographics. Um, obviously, things like creative directors, art directors, uh, developers, or even, you know, the creative industry, you want to put infographics. I get that. My advice, if you have a really wonderful infographic heavy CV, is do a second one that is just a copy, uh, just a, word, a text version of that. And I'll tell you why, is when you send that CV to that hiring team and they put it into their CRM, it will miss some details. They'll have to, they'll have to manually enter that or it will get missed entirely. This is about trying to friction, you know, make it as smooth as possible. And um, we talked about contact details and we talked about 
covering letter. They are my myth busters. We just got one question on that. Um, so do you recommend putting the years that you worked and went to university, like you know, I nineteen ninety one, as they can find out your age? Um, no, I, I, not from an age discrimination thing, but from a does it really matter? You know, and and yeah. also I'm a big fan of you know um, things like education. You know, if I told them I had nine GCSEs, does that really matter? Because um, my A levels weren't great, uh, but if I had a degree and it was a first, um, I would I'd rather put put in there degree Oxford University first in something use the space to highlight the great stuff you know yes of course you know if the role says you must have a certain you know bachelor's or whatever you have to put that but again think about so what I know you're very proud of I'm very proud of my nine GCSEs considering I was a little bugger at school um, but why would I put that on a CV that's got nothing to do with the application yeah so very quick slide this hopefully will give people an understanding where I've been talking about the journey of your CV you need to think more about where your CV is seen where it's passed to and how it gets in front of the people you want to do and this is why when I go back to those Mythbusters excuse me I'm not looking at it from a point of view of do this because I'm a nasty person or I've got my own opinion I'm trying to say streamline it and it will get to the person you want to and you can affect that person you want to when you meet them that's the whole thing to me about recruitment is think about getting an interview then get the interview and get the job so your cv finds its way to the hiring team now i call them the gatekeeper so hiring team is generally in-house recruiter or unfortunately most of the time it's the side of the desk job for someone especially at the moment um, someone will say they're looking for an event manager go and find me five event managers to interview. They'll give them a brief, they'll give them an overview, go and get me five people to interview. So the hiring manager is tasked with a short list. So what you've also got as well is you know, recruitment agencies. You've got speculatively where you've just sent your CV in, um, where there's a live job advert, um, where you've been referred and the dreaded ATS, which is automatic tracking software. Now, the big myth about ATS is, it is not a computer says no situation. So for those of you who don't know, ATS, you upload your CV, it scans your CV for keywords against the job description and spits you out the other end. Trust me on this, a human always checks it because there is no way, and this again, going back to the positive front, they are looking for you. They want to find you. They're not gonna let a computer software do that. ATS just makes their life easier and gets rid, uh, puts them into different channels. So. When that gets in front of the hiring team, this is all about that keyword. This is all about looking at the job advert and making sure your CV has many links back to that job advert. They're giving you the information, key accountabilities, key responsibilities. That's what your CV needs to do. We actually That's had a question, like, on, question on that is whether there's certain fonts that are better for that, those artificial, artificial intelligent machines to, to search through. <laughs> Or, no, I mean, you know, don't be using Helvetia signature or something stupid or something like, you know, what's it called? Arial or Calibri bold, you know, it's not, you know, it's just use the standard. Yeah, use the standard. I wouldn't think, you know, just remember, again, this is what we're talking about. People think about in front. If you're going to do a fancy CV, do a proper fancy CV. Don't just change your font, but then do a secondary one that's got bog standard you know, size 11 copy, um, and actually my, my template or Martin's template will have that on there. Yeah, actually that feeds into, we had another question of what's, what's your take on the creative CVs of chocolate bars with the CV printed on it and, and, and that, I've, I've never seen one of those, but is that too much at that stage? It, it depends, there's, there's a, an urban myth, but they promise it's real. You, a lot of people will know Social Chain, the, the media agency, and they had someone deliver their CV via, and I kid you not Richard, via a USB, and they had an owl fly into the office, <laughs> so, an owl. Now look, when I worked for Bank Sadler in Camden in a 150 person open plan office, if you sent an owl into our office, that would not reach my desk. Um, so you've just got to think about the audience. You know, there's nothing wrong with being creative, but you can, it can really backfire if you're cheesy. You know, yeah. you will get remembered, but you can have the best creative delivery method if your CV is terrible, if you don't match what they're looking, you won't get an interview. You'll just be remembered as that 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 person that shouldn't have applied for the job. Yeah. <laughs> so sound a bit harsh today, don't I? Sound like I'm in a right mood today, but yeah. I'm not. But it's, it's, yeah, just, it's good. It's good advice, though. I mean, the people's aim is to is to get the interview. So 
Look, I, look, I'll tell you a very quick story. You are talking to a guy, look, back when I used to do high street recruitment in my youth, we had cakes made of a foot delivered to our top 10 people we wanted to get you know, business with. And on the cake, it said, now we've got our foot in the door. Look, that is how cheesy I was, okay? So I've been there um, and done it. Yeah, it got us a few calls, but do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not a thing. So the CB gets in front. Oh, sorry, did you say something? No, no, carry on. So the CB gets to the gatekeeper or the hiring manager. This is that autumn. They're that human ATS. They are the persons between you and getting an interview. They need to go to the line manager, the hiring team, and say, here is my list and here is my reason why. They are the people that are the most important people in your life at that time because you will not get the job without going through them. OK, and that's what we've talked about previously. So once you're in front of that interview panel, we'll talk about that in a minute. But there is things we talked before. If you do have an extra long CV that you think can help you, nothing wrong with you emailing that team saying, looking forward to be interviewed on Monday. Here's, here's a more detailed copy. Nothing wrong with that at all. But remember, any interaction, anything you do, you've got to remember you will be uh, selected and judged on that because you are being judged. Yeah. Um, and of course, the hiring panel, there'll be people around that overall decision maker whose um, advice and guidance they'll actually ask for. So they're not as important, but they will be in the ear of that overall decision maker giving their opinion on you. So in that sort of previous, think about what your CV is saying about you. I won't, I've just noticed timing wise, so I'll whiz through, but this is basically how to lay out a CV. Now on my website, there is a template, you can download it. Um, there's a lovely chap called Martin Ellis who writes CVs for a living that helped me with it. It's there, go and download it and it will help me because what you've got to remember is, you know, recruitment is usually dumped on the side of a desk for people um, and, you know, they're looking at lots and lots of CVs. So try to keep it in a format that's very easy to read. So that's just some advice. I know I'm going through these, but I'm just very conscious. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So that's the um, download. So video interviewing. So the only time we'll talk about the new normal um, at the moment, obviously, things are a bit different. You know, the landscape has changed. Um, it's knocked us off our feet and the way we currently work has changed. Now, you might be getting an interview and starting a job somewhere without face to face meeting those people at all or even seeing their office or starting in their office. Now, video interviewing is a whole different skill and you must treat it as such. What I would say to you about video interviewing is remember, the interviewer is probably just as nervous as you are about video interviewing. It's just as new for them as it is you. And usually what happens in interviews face to face is you have a panel of two people, one listens, one talks, and then they switch over. And what usually happens on video interviewing is it becomes one to one. Now, we've proven that, you know, it's quite difficult to build rapport and have that sort of conversation, not, not, you know, you and I, but it's very difficult to really get across sometimes. So it's just about thinking that they're going through this the same as I. And, and to be honest, video interviewing technology, oops, sorry, video interviewing technology has been around and has been used as a selection method, whereas now decisions are being made on those video interviews. I have heard stories of automated videos where you don't even see a human being, you're just having automated video. Personally, if a company thinks hiring without meeting you or selecting without meeting you is is their sort of uh, culture and values, that's not a place I would want to work. But I know that you know the situation is is a very different at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll just show you how video interviewing can go drastically wrong. If you could roll that. Time. The question is how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. I mean, shift it, shifting. Shifting sands in the region, do you think relations with the North may change? Um, I would be surprised if they do. The, um, pardon me. Pardon me. My apologies. What is this going to be for the region? My apologies. North, uh, sorry. Um, North Korea, North uh, South Korea's policy choices on North Korea have been severely limited in the last six months. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and we've all probably seen that. Now, look, I mean, my favorite bit is the bit at the end where the hand comes in. Now, the reason I showed that is it links into 
I'm always asked, what is the biggest mistake people make on video interview? And the answer is not treating it with the same respect as a face to face, because that that was funny. OK, it was it was hilarious. It went viral. I'm telling you now, his producer, his boss, his director, they went mad at him. They went absolutely crazy at him because, yes, I think that's actually his wife. Um, yes, his wife was there, but it was like my wife today has actually taken the children out of the out of the house completely. I have a five year old and a one year old and they are gone. I can't risk yes. anything on here. And that is the same thing when you're being interviewed face to face. Kids need to have childcare. Animals are the same. You wouldn't walk, you wouldn't go into town for an interview and leave your kids just running around. You know, you'd get um, help. You'd get someone looked after. Same thing with a video interview. Personally, things that, you know, a shared house, for example, you know, with Wi-Fi, get them to go for a walk. Tell them how important it is. A video interview is just as important as a face to face. And that is the biggest mistake. If you remember nothing it's preparation, preparation, preparation. It's a serious situation. Um, you obviously want the job. You've got to act like it. You know, and I know this is tough for people to hear, but you are being judged. You are being selected, even down to like I've got. I can't show you because I'm not that limber anymore, but I've got shoes on for this. You know, I put my shoes on my, you know, I'm not in my socks. I'm not in a pair of shorts. I'm ready because this is serious and this is important. So treat it that way. Some very quick wins for you on interviewing. Um, Pre-interview. Remember now, they're not having as much conversation in the office about you, so they're a bit alone as well. Pre-interview, nothing wrong with sending your interviewer an email or a LinkedIn request saying you're looking forward to meeting them. Um, check your background, check your lights, check everything behind you. Make sure your tech works. Click the link beforehand, download, upload anything you do, because trust me, yes, you know, it's not your fault, but it does affect your interview. It will, if your interview cuts out short, unfortunately, you might not get another chance. Log in beforehand. If you were going for an interview at two o'clock in the afternoon, you wouldn't knock on their office door at two o'clock. You'd be there at quarter two. With video interviewing, log on at five minutes beforehand. Be ready and waiting for them. Don't let them wait for you. Um, on the hiring team, when you're beforehand, it's generally not them. Ask who's going to interview you and ask them questions around why have you put me forward okay what type of questions am i going to be asked and the most important one is what skills or experience gaps do you think i have that they might pick up now that sounds a bit pushy but if they can't answer that question for you you're walking into something blind and you wouldn't walk into something blind in any other part of your career so don't do it there so during the, the during the session creating rapport is really hard one piece of advice, nod, nod a lot, Richard, because people know that you haven't frozen. Use your ver uh, use your words, but um, mm, OK, use noises yeah. to set, tell them. I'm using my hands now to, to show that. That's I guess how smile, smile as well, like actually look absolutely. engaged. Yeah. That's the only way you can do it um, because you're not in the room. Another thing, they will ask you how you're coping with COVID. It will happen. Um, don't say, yeah, you're fine, but don't go into massive detail. Have an answer ready. And remember, they might be nervous too. Um, so afterwards, nothing wrong with popping an email saying thanks for your time and your follow up. So just before we get kicked off, top five tips that we talked about. Click the link or the tech. Treat it the same. Ensure your desk is clutter free so their focus is on you. Dogs, kids, not funny. Keep them out of the room. And make sure your browsers, phones, any sort of other web um any other any other tabs are open or your phone is on get it all off so you get as clean as you can connection god blimey rush done it that's it right on time perfect <laughs> <laughs> i just want to say though look that is three hours of content in 40 minutes okay please have a look at the website there's lots more webinars on there that goes into more detail no, perfect. No, thank, thank you, Robert. I know just from the, the comments we've had in the chats, we've had a lot of people engage and lots of questions that unfortunately won't have time for. Um, but a couple of people have asked for your, your website, so I'll just let them know that it's uh, www.usas.co.uk. So that's yousas.co.uk. And as Robert said, you can go on there for uh, CV tips. And also, um, Robert is very kindly offering one-to-ones. So if you want to, to learn more, just um, get some more advice or just have a chat, 
um, with Robert, then do just go to his website and you can um, book in a time slot to speak to Robert. But um, with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much uh, for your time today. Wonderful session again. Uh, again, to everyone, if you missed uh, Robert's session yesterday, you can catch up on that on demand. Uh, but for now, I'd just like to say thank you to all of you who joined um, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.